Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than Moff Gideon based off his appearance in Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2. Now I personally could not be more excited. It's always a good day when you have a new villain to add to the collection. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's done in the typical Star Wars style. An image of the figure himself front and center, wraparound banner down below with another product shot and one more on the side of the box but this time he's holding the Darksaber. On the back, you just have a bunch of warnings and legal information. Now, on the inside is where Hot Toys have gone to town with the artwork. I absolutely love this image. It's a darn shame it's relegated to the inside, because if this was printed on the front cover, you bet a bunch more collectors would be displaying their boxes. Now, when Hot Toys announced Moff Gideon, I was a little bit surprised. We still have a bunch of main characters that Hot Toys are yet to announce. I'm not complaining, because I'm all about my villains for my Star Wars display, but it was just a little bit peculiar. First in-hand impressions, though, are pretty darn positive. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now, starting off with the display base first, it's the usual rectangular Star Wars style base. This time, though, there is some light scuffing, some silver dry brushing on the surface. Now I guess you could argue that this is the flooring of Moff Gideon's light cruiser, and that works perfectly fine for me. Up front, Moff Gideon etched into a metal nameplate, and then of course a regular crotch grabber. Arguably the most important accessory here though is the Darksaber, and I'm pleased to report they nailed it. It looks really good. It's painted in high gloss black, there are a ton of small and intricate silver details, plus the handle is painted in gunmetal. You do of course have a proper metal ring down below in case you want to hang it from someone's belt. Now the blade portion is removable at the base of the emitter. The blade itself is slightly flexible and very thin. It is painted in high gloss black with a white border and you do have a ton of little squiggles through the middle to kind of mimic flowing energy. Now if you do remove the blade you have two options. The first of which is a swooshing blade and this looks great as well. It's painted in the exact same way as the standard one but it's a hell of a lot bigger. I don't know if I'm going to be using the swooshing blade in my display, but I do like that it's an option. If you do want to have Moff Gideon battling Din Djarin, yeah, that one will come in very handy. Lastly, you do have a fully disabled Darksaber. The blade is no longer ignited, so if you do want to have this hanging from a belt or just being held in someone's hand or maybe being passed off to Bo-Katan or someone else, this is the one you're going to go with. I do like that we do have a bunch of options. We do also get a brand new Star Wars pistol. I don't think we've ever seen this one before. The back part kind of looks like a real world gun all the way down to the silver painted magazine, but then the front is very Star Wars-y. We've got this nice bright chrome silver barrel and it does have some dirt and grime on the surface. You also have a scope up top with some high gloss front and back. They do have a couple of scratches and nicks on the surface just to make it look slightly more realistic. Lastly, you do get a few spare hands. Now for the most part, yeah, I'm very happy with these. They're these big bulky padded gloves with some silver dry brushing on the knuckles and some very nicely painted exposed fingers. However, they don't give you pairs and I don't know if that's just a me thing or if it's an everyone thing, but I like to have the option of having the gun in his right or his left hand, but you only get a trigger finger hand for the right side and a closed fist for the other. 
I don't exactly know why at the very least we couldn't have gotten two closed fists. Hot Toys, please, don't be stingy with your hands going forward. What we are going to do now though is get Moff Gideon himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And oh yes, that is Moff Gideon in 1-6 scale. And it makes me so very happy. Hot Toys, y'all have nailed it. He's not a character that I honestly was expecting them to make. They love making their heroes, but when it comes to villains, sometimes they're a bit behind the eight ball. But not this time, I love this figure. Starting off with the body, it is a little bit shorter, but the proportions are very, very good. It actually looks like a real person in a suit. They've also made some very interesting choices with the way the suit fits and works on the body. And then we get to the head sculpt, which I thought was going to be a little bit questionable. But now that I have it in hand, my mind has definitely been changed. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now on paper this outfit is very simple, but under closer inspection there's a lot more than initially meets the eye. Starting off with the head sculpt first, I love it. Which is quite surprising because based on the blogger pics, I was expecting to be underwhelmed. Here in hand though, the skin texture, the paint applications and the likeness, yeah, Hot Toys y'all have nailed it. This head sculpt does do most of the heavy lifting. Now one complaint that I have is the neck looks a little bit short. Out of the box, the collar is riding very high, you will need to adjust it and futz around with the cape. Speaking of the cape, it is a very nice stretchy and light fabric and there are two layers, one red one and one black. Now for some reason they aren't sewn together, so you can actually insert either the crotch grabber, a dynamic flight stand or something else up inside. You do have a very strong wire around the edge, plus a red pinstripe and some grey honeycomb patterning that goes from the top all the way down to the bottom. You also have some magnets embedded into the cape and the shoulder pads that perfectly keep it in place. I love the way they've done that. That means if you do want to have it draped over the shoulder pads, you can get that done. If the magnets weren't there, trust me, the cape would not be sitting in that position. Now, if you don't want it there, you can very simply remove it and then place it along his back. Now, the shoulder pads are asymmetrical. They're completely different designs. One is glossy and one is matte. You do have some painted in details up top for the straps and a couple more along the front of his armor plating. You do have this satin section up top and the rest of it is high gloss black. Now the belt is a rubbery plastic but it's sculpted to look like leather and it does a pretty darn convincing job. Out of the box it was sitting all the way up here but based on some reference pics I noticed that it should sit a lot lower. So you can simply scoot it down. Now he does have an additional belt with his holster and yes you can slot his pistol inside. Now on the arms you have this red pinstripe that runs all the way down underneath his gauntlets which of course are sculpted to look like leather just like the belt. And just like the belt, they've done a really good job. You also have this little communicator section on both sides with some painted in buttons and some scuffing on the surface. Now I was expecting that to be an asymmetrical design, and it is. One orange and one blue on one side and one orange and one red on the other. Coming down to the pants, red pinstripe once again, but the inside of the thighs are covered in pleather. I'm not exactly sure why that's there. If you know, let me know down below. Lastly, coming down to the boots, they're the typical Star Wars style boots with some straps that go along the front there. Now, I would have absolutely loved for these to have been sculpted plastic with a split cut boot design, but the look is undeniable. They're completely seamless and the texture is on point. On the underside though, they are completely smooth. So far, yeah, I'm really happy with Moff Gideon. 
Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Moff Gideon alongside Din Djarin. And as you can see, the Beskar version of the Mandalorian is taller. This makes perfect sense in real life, I'm pretty sure Pedro Pascal is the taller of the two. Now in the display you can play with the heights. Moff Gideon being slightly shorter with the Dark Troopers and the Death Troopers looming in the background behind him, yeah, I think that's gonna work very nicely. Speak of the devil, the Death Trooper is so big I literally had to adjust my camera. And as you can see, yeah, as expected, he towers over the moth, which again makes perfect sense. This totally works for me. Having a couple of these bad boys in the background behind Gideon in the display, oh yes, that's going to be very spicy indeed. And I know that's exactly what I'm going to do in my collection. If you're anything like me, you're probably pretty darn excited to give this Darksaber straight to your best Scarmando. And this is exactly what it's going to look like. Now unfortunately, he doesn't really come with a hand that's perfectly suited to hold it. He does come with one with a grip for the vibro blade, but the grip is far too tight. So I decided to go with the trigger finger hand. It fits in there and it looks really good, except from certain angles it can look slightly goofy, because his trigger finger is permanently extended. But again, if this was something you attempted to do, hopefully this gives you a rough idea of what it's going to look like if you were only planning to purchase Moff Gideon to get yourself a Darksaber. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a ball joint at the base of the neck. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that does get you way past 90, and then of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, but they are really fighting me. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend on ratchets at the knee that gets you just past 90, and lastly a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is this seam at the back of the belt. Not that it's there, I totally understand this is two pieces of plastic, but that it's so darn messy. They've obviously squished the two lengths together and then melted it in the middle. Hot toys, in the future, why not just use Velcro? We've seen you do it before, and it would look a darn sight better than this. The second annoying thing is how the gauntlet sits on the glove. As you can see, there is a very unsightly gap. Now technically you can squish it down, but over time it simply works its way back up. Now if they'd only made it out of a slightly softer material and molded the top so it could sit nice and flush over the hands, then it wouldn't have been an issue. But as it stands, that is something you're going to have to fight with. The third annoying thing isn't the look of the boots, it's the material they're made of. Hot Toys absolutely loves pleather, especially for Star Wars boots. As you can see, it buckles in at the ankles, which looks very unsightly, and over time these could potentially degrade. For now, yes, they look fine. But in a few years, I don't know how good, or indeed how bad, these are going to look. The first cool thing is they decided to use magnets in both shoulder pads and at the top of the cape. That means no matter how you have the arm positioned, the cape is always going to be in the right spot. The second cool thing is the Darksaber. Now this could have very easily gone horribly wrong. After all, this is the first time Hot Toys have ever made one, but in my opinion, they nailed it. From the shape and size of the hilt, the blade itself with the white outline and the glossy black interior, I love the way this looks. The third cool thing is a bit of a cop-out, but it's the head sculpt. I honestly don't think the early videos and pictures did this sculpt justice. But in person, the likeness is on point. The skin texture, the paint applications, and even the expression you can tell this guy is plotting something. If you have this figure on the way and you were a little bit nervous about the head sculpt, don't be. I reckon you are going to love it.
Just wrapping up on the Hot Toys Moff Gideon based off Mandalorian Season 1 and 2. Now going into this I was excited, but admittedly a little bit nervous at the same time. Hot Toys does have a proven track record, but sometimes they don't deliver. And the blogger picks led me to believe this was one of those times. Boy was I wrong. This figure is awesome. I don't often use the P word, but I'm going to use it here. Presence. Thought I was going to say perfect, but I switched it up. This guy has presence. He oozes that evil energy that Moff Gideon had in the show. You never quite know what his next move is going to be. That is captured perfectly by this head sculpt. It's slightly devious, yet slightly nonchalant at the same time. It's painted perfectly, and the skin texture plus the way they've done the hair, oh, it's just icing on the cake. Now, he doesn't come with a ton of accessories, but the accessories that are here are very good. The Darksaber is exceptional. My only complaint is that we only get one. I would have loved to have gotten two so I could give one to Din Djarin or even Clone Wars Maul, but I'll have to pick up another Moff Gideon or wait for another figure to eventually come with a Darksaber. That coupled with the fact his outfit is very nicely put together, yeah, I think this guy has gone from a mediocre release at first glance to a must-have. Now, it all depends on how you're putting together your display. If you're someone who just collects heroes, maybe Moth Gideon isn't on your radar just yet. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and a points-based reward system. If you do like the sound of your name appearing in the end credits of my reviews, check out that join button right next to the subscribe icon for more info on Justin's collection plus Max, the YouTube channel memberships. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.